Um, you can see I've already begun my solution, and um, I didn't say it, but this is part of what happens in math. So you guys have drawn like dozens of these, right? And you know it's a useful tool for solving all kinds of problems, and some of these are on the board. In fact, really all of these problems can be solved out of this one little diagram, which is why it's so, um, it's so powerful. Okay? Now, I'm not quite finished. Your tree might look a bit different to mine, but I hope we all ended at the same spot. You should have found four numbers at the ends of all the branches. Did you get the same four numbers I did? Yeah. yeah? Okay. So you can see, and this is what I tend to do, once I always finish a tree, I get a new color, and I highlight, I circle, all of the primes, okay? Um, I like doing it in another color because it sort of makes it stand out a little bit more. Is seven a prime number? Seven is a prime number. Okay. Now, what do I do with those? I've circled them, right? How do I get those and answer the question? What is the prime factorization? Or 60. What am I going to write? Yes. Two squared. That's two squared there. Yeah. Times three times five. Perfect. Okay. So this, this being here, this is the prime factorization of 60. You might want to write that down. If you looked at that the first time, you're like, hmm, have we used this phrase before? Uh, this is what is being asked for when they say, what is the prime factorization? There it is. Now. This happens um, in maths quite a lot when it says, well, look, you've got this now. You can use it in all these different ways. So we're going to do number two. In order to get the highest common factor, I'm going to need some more factor trees for these numbers. Okay? Now, they're pretty quick. I wonder if you can help me. 42 sounds to me like 6 times 7. Very good. 7 is prime, so I can't do anything else with that. I can do something with 6 though, what's that? 3 and 2. 3 and 2, very good. So just like before, I'm going to get my new colour out, and I'm going to circle all of the primes. Okay. So what am I going to do with that? Like, what's, what's the usefulness of this, and how does it interact with that? Anyone want to give me a suggestion? Turin. Okay, I'm going to 3 and 2, and it says it's quite the highest common factor, so you'll choose 3. Very good. I want to know the biggest number I possibly can that will be dividing into this and dividing into this without any remains. That's what a factor is. Like Truman said, I spot a 2 and 2, and I spot a 3 and a 3. Right? That's all the common factors. I can't use two 2s because there's only one over here. Right? Can't use that 5 because it's not over here. Can't use the 7 because it's not over there. So that's it. So I'm going to say, Therefore, the highest common factor of 60 and 42, you see this is a really, really condensed, abbreviated way of saying it. The highest common factor of these two numbers is 2 times 3. That's the two numbers you told me about, which is, of course, 6. Okay. And you can check it, 6 does divide into both quite nicely. Okay, part B. Again, we need one more tree. We're going to do something a bit different with this one. Um, 56, yeah? 56. Can someone tell me what they divided 56 into? Yes, give me. 2 and 28. 2 and 28. Okay. What can I do with that? Someone else who didn't um, have to say anything yet? Yeah, Nikhil. Um, 28, right? Yeah. Oh, 14 and 2. 14 and 2. Okay, so now I'm left with 14. Yes. 7 and 2. Thank you, Abby. Okay, so now I'm done. Everything is prime. One last time for good measure, I'm going to circle all my primes. One, two, three, four. Okay, now this is a bit tricky. We're, we're trying to combine all these different skills together. So let's see if we can understand this one. I've got a new color. This time I want something different. I want a lowest common multiple. So how am I going to use these factors this time? You want to give me a suggestion? I do here. Lowest common multiple is tricky, and we did do it very recently. Yeah, did you want to make a suggestion before I talk? It is, it's a tricky question. A lowest common multiple, right? So for example, the lowest common multiple, let's think of an easy example, the one you guys have seen before, of 3 and 5, right? It's 15. Do you agree with that? Like, 15 is a multiple of 3, it's a multiple of 5. Okay? Another way of saying that is 3 and 5 are both factors of 15. So I want all of these factors to be in my lowest common multiple, okay? Thus, Okay, so and this is where um this is where it gets a little bit confusing, but I'm gonna highlight it in this way. Two is not a multiple of fifty-six or sixty, because we are looking of, we're thinking about factors, right? So two is a factor of forty-two and six. 
but it's not a multiple. The multiples of 60 are like, well, 60 and then, what's the next one? 120 and then the next one's 180. They're really big numbers, right? 240 and so on. So multiples means you, as the name suggests, you multiply over and over again. Whereas factors mean you divide. That's different operations. Does that make sense? So they're easy to confuse, but putting them together helps us see. So what I want is to find a number which has all of these factors here, as well as all of these factors here. Does that make sense? So let's start with twos. My lowest common multiple of 56 and 60. How many twos am I going to need in it? Two. Yeah, really. Okay, I'm going to need at least two, because look, I, I've got two there, right? But when I have a look over at this number, how many twos are there here? There are three, and I need all of them, right? So the first thing I'm going to write is two cubed. Right? The next prime after two is three. Do I need any threes? Do I need a three? I do, don't I, right? Uh, there's a three here, okay? So I have used the two, the two, and the two there. I've covered these twos as well, because they're, they're hidden in there. And now I want the three as well. I'll write that down. So that's covered. And you can see what's left, right? You see the numbers I haven't underlined yet? Five hasn't been underlined, so I need that. And seven hasn't been underlined, so I need that. Does that make sense? Now, this is a big number. I don't even know what it is yet. Can we try and work it out together? Do you think we can do it? Yeah, thank you. Do you already have the answer? Yeah. Okay, before we get there, let's see if we can unpack it together. Um, this is 8. What's 3 times 5? Yeah, 15. And then there's 7. Okay, which part should I do first? What's 8 15s? I reckon we can do that. 8 15s. Hmm. That's the same as 4 30s, isn't it? 4 30s? What's 4 30s? That's, yeah, 120. 120. Okay, I'm almost there. 120 times 7. Let's just forget about the zero for a second. 7 times 12. We can use 7 times 12. 7 times 12 is 84. So then I add the zero back. Done. That wasn't so difficult after all. Okay? Does it work? Will 56 go into that? You can check if you want. I won't do it right now, but it's easy to check. And I can do the same for 60. I'm pretty sure it'll work out. Okay? So. Did anyone attempt the challenge? Yeah, yeah true. I just have a question. Yeah, of course. You know, there's, there's five twos, but <coughs> two cubed. Isn't it meant to be two five? Ah, okay. So, we're here trying to work out, there's a bit of a difference between working out the common factor and the common multiple. When you've got the common multiple, you want the smallest number you possibly can, right? Like, I don't want it to be big, I want it to be little, okay? So, I put in three twos to include all of these guys. When I look over here, three twos is even more than two twos, right? I've already covered this. I don't need to multiply by more twos. I've already got enough to cover this number and enough to cover this number, right? So, for example, if I just multiply this by two, it's still going to be a multiple of 60. I don't need to multiply by five twos. I only need three of them, okay? So this is about getting the smallest number, whereas this one is about getting the highest number, and they've got to be on both lists. So they do work a little bit differently, that's why I was challenging it. Okay, did anyone, sorry I missed, did anyone try the challenge? Did anyone try it? Okay, I'm just going to quickly show you, and if you're curious more about the details, I will show you a bit later on. Uh, remember I said, just in the beginning, that this guy here, and the tree that it came from, it's the key to all these questions, yeah? Watch this. 60 is 2 squared times 3 times 5. Every square number, like say 100, can we just quickly do the prime factorization of 100? Can someone suggest? Because we know what this is equal to. Yeah. 10 and 10. I can keep going, can't I? Because these aren't prime. What goes after this? Really? 2 and 5. 2 and 5. And then you have to go 2 and 5 again, don't you? Okay. So therefore, 100 is 2 squared times 5 squared. Okay. Hmm. Let's try another one. How about 36? 36. That's a square number as well. What's the square of? Yeah. 6, right? So I've got 6 and 6. What does 6 go into? 3 and 2. Very good. 2 and 3, 2 and 3. So therefore, this is 2 squared times 3 squared. Now, have a look at that for a second. 36, 100, you can try it with any square number you like. When you do the factorization, 
you always end up with everything squared. That makes sense. It's a square. So have a look at this. This is squared, but these two are not squared, right? So if I multiply by an extra 3 and an extra 5, do you see that'll make it 2 squared, 3 squared, 5 squared? Do you see that? Yes. So that's, what's this? What's this equal to? That's 15, isn't it? So what happens? What is 60 times 15? 60 times 15. 15 lots of 60. Selena? It's, oh, see, hold on. 60 times 15. 60 times 15. Yeah, actually, I think it is, isn't it? 900. 900. Is 900 a square number? Yeah. It is, isn't it? It's, I think it's 30, 30. squared. Okay? Now, you can get bigger numbers than that, but that's the smallest one. That's the smallest square you can possibly get that is a multiple of 60. So anyway, these are the kinds of questions, you know when we did those problem solving type things? These are the kinds of questions you get. And you can see you solve them in the same way, so using the same tools.